go to the club club brat summer is in full swing i actually can't stop singing it it's kind of an addiction at this point i'm either in brat summer mode or i'm in twisters glenn powell mode there's like no there's no in between ever hi everyone i am so excited for today's video for as much as i love a good spicy book i wanted to give you guys some no spice book recommendations and these books are some of my favorites for as much as i am a spicy book girl i also love a book without spice don't get it twisted. I feel like book talk, myself included, so many people talk about spicy book recs and all these things. I wanted to talk about books that I genuinely love, not just for the spice. You feel me? You feel me? I just went on a run. That's why I'm literally in a sports bra filming this. And then I put some makeup on my face so I looked somewhat presentable. Can we talk about this eyeshadow? You see how it like shifts? It's from a small business on TikTok shop called Adriana Nicole Cosmetics. Let's get into the good stuff. Look at this shirt I got, guys. If you feel it, chase it. If you feel it, chase it. The obsession has gone too far. Anyways, you guys aren't here for a fashion and beauty review. You're here to hear about some non-spicy books or closed door romance as you will. If you haven't already, make sure you like this video and subscribe to my channel for more bookish content. Let's get into the no spice book recommendations. So we're gonna start off with one of my favorites ever. I'm sure everyone knows about the series, but just wanna talk about it again because it's no spice. It, feel, it feels like there is, like the tension's just crazy. And that is, <laughs> are we surprised? No. I talk about this book every single chance I get, so you bet I had to include it in this video. It is Powerless by Miss Lauren Roberts. Of course I had to include this. I'm not gonna say it's a literary masterpiece, but it was sure as heck entertaining. If you haven't read it or haven't heard of it, this is a little enemies to lovers moment. There's a brother love triangle. She basically has grown up in a kingdom where there's elites and ordinaries and elites have like superpowers and ordinaries don't and the kingdom has banished all of the ordinaries all of the people without power and surprise surprise our female main character Peyton is born without powers her dad actually trained her to pose as a psychic so her ability is being a psychic and that's how she's like lived all of these years in like the slums of their kingdom one day as she is stealing as she does to survive she unknowingly saves the prince of their kingdom and now that that has happened all of a sudden she gets flung into these trials that the kingdom have and the trials are basically to showcase elite's power so she is just flung into this competition with all of these people who have powers and she's like oh my god i don't if they find out they're gonna kill me if the prince finds out the prince that i'm falling for that is the enforcer of the kingdom the prince who carries out the execution of these ordinaries once they're found that's who she's falling for as someone who has no powers it is so good it's so juicy he literally braids her hair kai azer the man that you are the next book that honestly kind of caught me by surprise i was not expecting to like this book as much as i do is check and mate by ali hazelwood this is ali hazelwood's debut young adult novel and i had loved her other books our female main character grew up as a literal chess prodigy. She ended up taking a step away from chess. She basically has to get back into chess because her family needs money. Like her family is really, really struggling. And she is the one who puts the roof over their heads. So she decides to go back into the chess world and try and win some money. And the first competition she enters, she beats the number one chess player in the world, Nolan. And Nolan is right around her age. You know where this is going. I think, not that it's similar, Similar to Queen's Gambit but I would definitely say if you like the vibes of Queen's Gambit in the chess aspect that was kind of how like chess heavy this was it wasn't like super hard to follow or anything the banter was amazing and I genuinely just thought this was such a cutesy book and look how pretty the cover is the next book I'm gonna talk about is a little YA fantasy moment I'm Caraval by Stephanie Garber this book definitely took me like a little bit to get into but honestly the world is just so like whimsical and magical i didn't have a hard time imagining the setting imagining anything it, the vibe was like lotus hotel from percy jackson the lotus casino where you know they eat the thing they're just kind of like lost in time in there forever that's kind of how the setting of this book is basically there's like a magical traveling circus it's basically 
a big competition. It's five nights of trying to win this game, but there's a bunch of things in this world to like distract you and kind of take you away from your goal. So that's why people kind of get like lost in this because they just want to stay in the carnival. So anyways, two sisters have been literally begging to get in this competition. They constantly write letters to the game organizer. His name's Legend. He's a manipulative queen. The reason this competition is so intriguing is because whoever wins gets one wish. They can wish like anything. They finally get their invitation to join. They go and then one of the sisters is kidnapped by the game organizer. She's just kidnapped immediately. So the other sister has to win the game to get her back essentially and that's what it's like taking you through. I have only read the first book. I haven't read the second or third but I did really like this one. If you want something super whimsical magical and just overall fun and very like engaging there is romance but I would definitely say romance is a subplot so the next book we're gonna talk about is actually a trilogy I reread every summer it is of course the summer I turned pretty by Jenny Han I love this trilogy with my whole heart and I will never stop talking about it so as soon as I decided to film a video with non-spicy book recommendations you know this had to be in it the vibes are so there it's childhood friends to lovers both of their families go on vacation every single summer and she falls for the older brother older brother superiority and basically the trilogy follows her over years going between the two brothers I'm sure y'all know what this is about I just had to put it in here I'm sure you know what it's about Mwah. I love her okay I have heard people talk about this book not as much as I think they should be talking about it this book and the next one are books that I actually read like years ago when I was in middle or high school and I need to go back and reread them I have always been really into reading but I would say this book that I'm about to talk about in the next one are the ones that like really really made me fall in love with romance books this is what started it all Anna and the French Kiss by Stephanie Perkins this is so good so basically our female main character is in high school and her dad sends her to boarding school in Paris I love a boarding school setting there's this guy he has a girlfriend but they are like hitting it off and it's basically about her experience at this Paris boarding school being an American being a little tourist around Paris and quite literally falling for this guy who has a girlfriend and she like may she like maybe also has a boyfriend but like they just can't stay away from each other it's genuinely so good I don't want to like spoil too much I went into this book pretty blind I, and obviously years later the Netflix series Emily in Paris came out you know how in Emily in Paris she is like really into Gabrielle but he has a girlfriend it's like that kind of relationship vibe like low-key and now the next book that I personally feel like is a little bit of a unique pick and I pat myself on the back for this one not to get political or anything this book is giving like election year this is The Wrong Side of Right by Jen Marie Thorne I don't think I've ever heard anyone talk about this book and I remember just absolutely flying through this book and eating it up now let me explain don't be put off by the political stuff so our female main character Kate is dealing with the loss of her mother so Kate's mom was a single mom she never knew her dad she finds out that her dad is running for president of the United States like her real dad he basically had an affair with Kate's mom and then like was never in her life or anything because she was like an affair baby now that her mom has died she has to join the campaign with a man she has never met with a man she didn't grow up with with a family she doesn't even know so now she is on on the campaign trail and she ends up falling for the current president's son it's a bad boy he's a bad boy you know it's like it's like low-key kind of forbidden their dads are in opposite political parties her dad's trying to get president of the United States and his dad is trying to get reelected. and there's oh my gosh there's so many scenes where it's like they're at some political event and they're just like looking at each other from across the room this is not similar but like movies like the first daughter and chasing liberty it's giving it's giving that but not the security guard thing because it's the other candidate's son but it's like those vibes like that type of political that's what I mean it was so good and the last book I'm gonna talk about I'm sure everyone also knows this one but I just want to emphasize how good it is especially since the sequel is coming out later this year we need to talk about better than the movies by Lynn Painter this is like a YA fluffier version of the Duff movie so basically in this book 
Liz and Wes are neighbors and they've been neighbors since they were kids and they always pick on each other. Not that they're enemies, I would say more they're frenemies. Like they just kind of, they just picked on each other throughout the years. One of Wes's best friends that went to school with them when they were younger is moving back. And this is Liz's like biggest crush ever. She has the biggest crush on this guy and she's like, Wes, I need your help. You know him better than I do. Like, please help me get this guy. So as they are scheming, she ends up realizing that she likes Wes more than the guy she's trying to go after. It's giving the Duff vibes. You know what I'm talking about? Cause the main girl asks the neighbor for help with the other guy and then she ends up falling for him. This book is just perfection. It is so cute and fluffy. There's so many like classic rom-com references. A lot of Taylor Swift references. It's not too crazy or anything, but it was like the perfect amount. It's just such a cute fluffy read. I love it. I love it. That was it for my non-spicy book recommendations. I hope you found some new books to put on your TBR or I hope I convinced you to finally read some of Book Talk's most popular books if you haven't already. Make sure you like this video and subscribe to my channel and I'll see you in the next one. Bye!